So for years, crypto has been synonymous with energy consumption. In fact, in September 2022, the White House pointed to crypto assets sometimes requiring considerable amounts of electricity usage, which can result in greenhouse gas emissions. Well, the Solana Foundation has been vocal about its commitment to sustainability and just came out with a new energy use report, which revealed that energy use per transaction on the Solana network declined by 25% with total emissions from the network decreasing by more than 17% since the last update more than seven months ago. How has Solana been able to achieve this drop in energy use and what does this signify? Sure, well, thanks for having me and, and giving us a chance to talk through this. I think the first thing to be aware of is there are different types of blockchains with different types of technologies and Solana in particular is a very energy efficient blockchain. It always has been. That's also the same things that make it a very fast, a very cheap blockchain. And so if you look at a single transaction on the Solana network, that's the energy equivalent of less than a Google search. So that's what we're talking about just in terms of sort of magnitude here. Uh, over the last six months, you know, the Solana Foundation has this commitment to regularly measure the carbon footprint of the Solana blockchain you know, so that we can hold the network accountable to make sure that, you know, we are doing our part in this climate crisis. And so over the last six months, what we've seen is that energy, uh, the total carbon footprint of the network has dropped around 17%. And the carbon footprint on a per transaction basis has dropped about 25%. What's likely driving the fall of uh, the carbon footprint on a per transaction basis is general um, upgrades to the network that just make it a more efficient network as is. And so you'll see these ebbs and flows in the footprint of the network. But what we're excited by is the fact that the footprint of the network is, is heading in the right direction. And what's always been true, which is that it's a very, very energy efficient network remains being true. So even with the significant reductions, the Solana Foundation purchased carbon credits to try and offset the network's 2022 emissions. How did that idea come about and why was it important for Solana? Sure. So the foundations first started releasing these energy use reports uh, in 2021, a couple of years ago, as part of this conversation about the role of blockchain in the climate crisis. And we had two commitments there. One is we want to accurately measure the carbon footprint of the network. And then based on the measurement, we want to make sure that the network is carbon neutral. And so we've been purchasing offsets based on what's measured for the carbon footprint of the network ever since that first report. What's unique about what we're doing this time is that for the first time, we purchased carbon offsets for the network entirely on chain. So, you know, carbon uh, markets are historically kind of a messy market. It's really difficult to track and trace where these carbon offsets are coming from. And what's really interesting about these offsets starting to move on chain is they become much more transparent and much more trackable. And you don't see things like the ability to, for example, buy the same carbon credit twice. And so we're excited about this move to not just be offsetting the carbon footprint of the blockchain, but also make sure that you know we're doing it in a very trackable, traceable way and at the tip of that sphere. So how is the crypto industry as a whole able to address energy efficiency and environmental concerns? What steps are being taken? A few months ago, I worked on a report about regenerative finance or refi, which essentially leverages crypto rails to rebuild economies in ways that are more inclusive and sustainable. Is that part of the equation? Absolutely. I'll say this is one area, you know, if, if I wasn't working in blockchain, I'd be working in climate. So I personally am really passionate about this. Uh, I'm a huge tree hugger. I'm passionate about the environment and I we have to be hitting our climate goals. So I wouldn't be in this space if I didn't feel like the space was, wasn't 100 percent aligned with some of my personal goals and just seeing our climate thrive. Uh, one of the most interesting things here is not just making sure that we're accurately measuring the carbon footprint of chains or offsetting the carbon footprint of chains. We have to be really honest and accountable with ourselves as an industry about that, but also to look into ways that we might be able to use blockchain to be able to be climate forward. Now, I'm not a Pollyanna hitch here about this, right? When I first heard about the idea of on-chain carbon markets, for example, my reaction was like, blockchain can't solve everything, guys. But the more I look into it, there's some really interesting boons here. So you have these companies that are doing on-chain carbon markets, like I mentioned, but then also people taking really novel approaches to the climate crisis using the benefits of blockchain technology. So for example, there's a company building on Solana called YHI, and they uh, basically offer distributed 
weather tracking systems in order to incentivize better weather tracking in places where we're getting really poor data. Uh, there's people using distributed IoT networks, uh, what we call DPIN, for really interesting use cases as well. So you know, you see the helium network being used for flood censorship, or not flood censorship, flood sensors in interesting places, or to be able to track lines in the Masai Mara. So there are all kinds of creative things people are coming up with, and I'm really encouraged by what entrepreneurs are building in this space. Last month, Solana reached its yearly high of more than $68 and gained more than 65% in November alone. What do you attribute the rise to? What's behind the recent price action? So I'll say, you know, at the Solana Foundation, we can't comment on price. We don't comment on price. And, and um, it's not something we specifically pay attention to. But what I will say is that it's been really exciting over the last few years to be able to look at the um, grit and determination of builders in the Solana ecosystem. And what we are starting to see, and I think I feel confident we'll see going into 2024, is a lot of these builders go from you know, heads down, building infrastructure, getting the really nitty gritty engineering done to coming out with use cases that are gonna be really transformative for businesses and consumers. So that's everything from making it really easy to get remittances around the world at really fast and really cheap rates to people taking on secondary ticketing platforms and really fighting against extractive fees. Um, and so I'm hopeful going into 2024 that these real world use cases are gonna get a lot more attention and, and people are gonna see the potential of the technology. Now, speaking with CNBC Squawk Box last month, Kathy Wood was bullish on Solana, praising the protocol for its cost effectiveness compared to its competitor, Ethereum. What's your reaction to Wood's comments? And do you think Solana has the potential to outpace Ethereum as it pertains to speed and cost effectiveness? Look, I think if you look at uh all the technologies in this ecosystem, I think they're all incredibly exciting. And what I'm here for is sort of the growth of blockchain technology. So are there differences between Ethereum and Solana? Absolutely. I'm excited about the technological promise that Solana holds. Absolutely. And that's really what I'm focused on. And so, you know, everyone from, you know, Anatoly, sort of the first driving engineer of the Solana ecosystem um, to, you know, and you know, engineers and builders all over uh, the ecosystem are really excited about the promise of this particular technology. Um, and we're not here to, you know, um, you know, say anything negative about a different chain. Uh, we're here because we're excited about the specifics of Solana. And I think, generally speaking, in blockchain, as all these technologies grow, we're all going to we're all going to see benefits uh, to the industry and, and hopefully to the future of the architecture of the internet. So we have seen some regulatory developments here in the U.S. with lawmakers advancing the stablecoin bill and the Fit for the 21st Century Act, which establishes a crypto framework. What do you think about those bills and what's your outlook for crypto regulation in 2024? What would you like to see from lawmakers? Well, start the, the thing that I want to see uh, as sort of an entrepreneur um, and someone who works with a lot of entrepreneurs is we want to see regulatory certainty. So we want it to be possible, you know, j just like with my last company, which is not a blockchain company, uh, to be able to start and be able to easily know what registration steps you have to take uh, to be able to comply. We want that same thing for blockchain builders. And I'm incredibly excited about um, some these bills that are coming to the forefront into 2024. So you mentioned the Fit Bill and the Stablecoin Bill. You know, these bills both passed out of the uh, House Financial Services Committee and, and the Fit Bill passed out of the House Agriculture Committee uh, at the end of July. And these passed out on a bipartisan basis on the same day. That doesn't happen, right? That is real momentum. And I think it's really easy uh, to fall prey to some of the uh, notions about Washington not working to you know, lose sight of the fact that this really is progress. And so I think as we go into next year, there's real bipartisan momentum to start to see um, some of these bills really, um, you know, continue to move forward in the House, potentially move forward in the Senate. Um, and hopefully this time next year, we'll see more certainty for builders in the space. And it certainly will be very interesting to see what transpires. Amira Valiani, Head of Policy with the Solana Foundation. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Talia.